We have built the snow racer to go on ice, but in today's video we're modifying it with this brushless motor to go on grass, gravel and asphalt. So I brought in the old snow racer from this video. There are aluminium extrusions, hinges, rods, angles that we can reuse, so I took it all apart. Also my thumb. Ugh. Through the printing a even larger tire would take ages, so I decided to use the rear tire from this ATV. But before working on the tire, I removed the old brushless motor and here's the size of it. But this is the new motor and it's absolutely massive. This is a $800 electric motor that based on these numbers could straight up fly a person. Instead of a propeller though, we are going to use a 52 teeth rear axle gear and a 11 on the motor. Which means the motor has to spin almost 5 revolutions for the tire to spin 1. The tire was in really bad shape, so I decided to only use the rim and I designed 3D printed hubs that would hold the drive gear and bearings. So before replacing the tire, I let the air out and got one bead off almost instantly. One side left. I spent hours trying to get the new tire fully on the rim and here's me realizing it's not gonna happen. But then the tire was magically on, just like how I could flip it and now the rim was black. Here are the two 3D printed hubs that holds the gear and the bearings. I cut some threaded rods, they are there to hold the hubs onto the rim and this red one will later hold the drive gear. They were printed in PLA and weighs more than one kilogram each. But now everything that was left was to cut them off. I added some blue thread lock since it would probably vibrate quite a bit. Now I could add the steel axle through the bearings and the drive gear with long threaded rods going through the entire assembly. The tire! How awesome is that? Now that's the three printed tires, the gear, the axle and here's the other side and that's all clamped together onto the rim. These are the type of aluminium extrusions I use for construction and for this particular setup I would like to have a u-shaped holder for the tire. And so actually if we go ahead and shrink this down it will fit just in place for us to have an additional, an additional two beams go out and have the tire right around this area. These are pillow block bearings. I can slide on top of this aluminium piece to tighten the chain. But they didn't quite match the shaft size, so I had to improvise. For the motor connectors I used crimp cable lugs, followed by a series of Canadian moose sounds. That way I didn't have to solder these massive connections and you can also disconnect them quite easily. During the electric ATV build, the motor and electric speed controller combination wasn't compatible, so the motor kept stalling before it reached high enough revolutions to supply the power. That's not the case with this ESC. The motor is responsive right away and the higher mechanical advantage helps too. Now I could tighten the chain and secure the bearings and test it for the very first time. PCBWay offers the best custom PCB prototyping services, but did you also know that they do injection molding, 3D printing, laser and CNC cutting? With their instant quote feature, you can simply upload your model, in this case an adapter for the brushless motor that lets me connect it to the drive gear, and here's how it turned out. You can choose from SLA, FDM, and SLM, which is a laser melting a metal powder to make metal parts. They also have an instant quote feature for their custom PCB, so go ahead and try it right now at PCBWay.com. I did some more testing, but it quickly came to a stop. Did it kill 
Okay, instead of having a tiny transmitter, I 3D printed the steering wheel attachment that let me add two aluminium pipes to each side so that I could have a twist throttle to control the motor. Because I didn't want to 3D print the entire steering wheel, I could simply add glue to join the two pieces together. Then I added a seat and here's the container for the batteries. With everything in place we could finally take it outside and ride it for the first time. The frame is slightly elevated so that when I sit down my weight is added to the tire and you can tell this work as the tire is grabbing grass and not only snow. Clearly this didn't work great and it probably just needed studs. Before adding them I really wanted to try going on gravel and grass. Water damaged a circuit however and I had to drag it all the way back. So I added a 3D printed shield and waterproofed the circuit. I also 3D printed a container for the electronics to hopefully protect it. And now everything was working again so I could try it on gravel. Well, we're not lacking traction, torque, we got that, but it's just too much friction. I was able to get it going on asphalt, but it was clear that we needed studs. So I got these short but sharp screws that you could insert without removing the tire. It was disappointing to see that it didn't do much on gravel or grass, but then I tried going on the road. At this point I decided to remove the studs and replace them with much longer screws. I cut 115 screws, 2 cm long, or about 1 inch. Let's see if we can do it today. The fact is that you maybe look at it a bit wrong here. It can be that instead of focusing on doing this here so hard, maybe you need better wheels that divide the weight better better. Om du hade sig ett tefat, mm. vet du vem man satt på? Ja. Och ett rep, och jag drog dig, då hade det inte varit så svårt. Men vi får väl testa gräset också. Satan var kul! But then we got some ice and I could finally test it. 
The problem with long studs are that they bend when riding on hard surfaces like ice. We might be able to solve it by adding more weight to the rear tire and shortening the studs. But I could go pretty fast and that's still only using 24 volt batteries. We didn't have enough ice on the lake so I couldn't go out there but that's gonna be part 2 which should come pretty soon. I also have 3 of these massive lithium ion 24 volt batteries which we could connect in series to make a 75 volt battery. It might also be a good idea to use the weight of the batteries to push down on the tire to increase traction. Thank you for watching, give it a thumbs up, it tends to make the video a bit more popular. See you again soon, bye.